It's that Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? It's that Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's that? good? Red Panda Anthem. <laughs> We have to keep an eye on the racial discrimination lawsuits. Uh, mm. I have been looking at that this weekend. Are you up on that? Um, I was actually looking at the Amazon situation when you talk about discrimination. The union workers or the discrimination? Union, union, yeah, well, the union situation? Yeah, the president, the, the gentleman, black man who actually led that, first started as discriminatory practices during the, in the workforce. Ended up being to a immunization situation. So I was like, put us on, put us on again. Uh, it's a lot of lawsuits, actually. Yeah. Um, a lot of lawsuits. Actually, I was I was doing some research this week. I didn't really realize how how massive it was, mm-hmm. but um, a lot of lawsuits of people, you know, talking about racial discrimination in Tesla. Um, so I still have to do more research on it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you just Google it, a lot of articles come up. So that's alarming. Yeah, we should call Rachel on it. She probably has the research already. Yeah, that would be great. We need to bring her back. We have, we have to look into this. I'm not oblivious. I, I do read Instagram comments. <laughs> yeah, and, they came uh, in with that and his, you know, yeah, South yeah. Africa and the mining thing. I'm, but I get it's, it. it's good to know. I mean, yeah. as Kanye said, if 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 racism was a deal breaker, then I wouldn't be living in America. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I mean, you probably there, there is no Fortune 500 company that probably has not at some point discrimination, a racial discrimination lawsuit. Yeah. That's just the harsh reality of it. Not to say that it's okay, right. but like I said, if racism was a determining factor and we wouldn't live in America, this country was built on racism, literally. That's kind of the founding principle. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, you know, it, it's one of these things, right? It just is what it is. But I'm definitely interested in learning more about that situation um, and keeping an eye on that. Because- Do they have more discrimination lawsuits in comparison to their counterparts? In comparison? I'm not playing devil's advocate. I'm just I'm not sure. I'm not okay. sure. The counterparts, like who would be like, their counterpart? Like, like four GM. Four GM. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But but then are we really surprised? No. Like I said, I mean, this yeah. it's America. What do you what do you expect? Um, but another way to actually get Tesla exposure if you don't want to own hundred percent Tesla stock is through ETFs mm-hmm. and um XLY. Is an ETF where Tesla actually makes up 21% of the portfolio. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amazon is 23% and Tesla is 21%. So Tesla is a, a very volatile stock. Everybody or everybody should know that and should understand that. Mm-hmm. It's not your average stock. Um, so if you don't have the stomach for it or if you think that it's too volatile for you, but you still want to invest in it, then maybe you can go the ETF route and invest in it that way where you don't have 100% exposure. You just have in this case, 21% of the portfolio is exposed to it. QQQ, I believe it's in QQQ as well, a couple other ETFs, but yeah. it makes up a, a, a pretty large percentage of uh, 21%. That's pretty. That's a pretty large percentage. Yeah, and, and a lot of people are familiar with the ARC fund. And so, you know, Tesla's inside pretty much all those across the board. Uh, yeah, but ARC, ARC is... What I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say that uh, Kathy Wood actually sold $205 million worth of Tesla stock last week. So that's interesting too, because that is in almost every one of the ARC fund ETFs. Yeah. Yeah. That was possible possibly for not to cut you off for shot, uh, but to take some profits to prevent some of the bleeding that's happening and the other investments that she's had, and then maybe to salvage relationships and maybe pay out clients as well. A lot of bleeding. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. a lot of bleeding. And that's why I try and tell every retail investors on the stock club call, I had the, the honor of having like Dave on. And he said the only real advantage that we have as retail investors is to be able to hold longer than them. So even when a hedge fund sells on a quarterly, and we've talked about wellwisdom.com, holdingschannel.com, right? But when these hedge funds are selling on a three-month cycle, that's because that's the business they're in and clients need immediate results. Like very rarely will you see a client stay with the fund for 15 years anymore. That That's not happening these days, right? So don't, even with that news, don't, confuse her profit taking with exiting the position and just saying, I'm completely done with Tesla because we don't want to send like a mixed signal to the audience. But I I think it could be because the bleeding has been happening over like the prior seven or eight months. So yeah, the power of the retail investor. And and I think this, this is an opportunity to talk about ETFs as well. The reason why, Mm -hmm. you know, I like ETF, like going back to basketball, um, you know, my son plays basketball and, you know, I was talking to some of the parents and the coaches and I always say, even when I was playing, me, I'm the kind of even I used to coach actually too. I like to have seven or eight players at the most 
I didn't really like to have 12 players. The reason why I never liked to have 12 players on a roster is that you can't play 12 players. And what happens is that when somebody doesn't play, they get discouraged. And, you know, they it, it's not good, right? It's not good when somebody's not playing. They could become a cancer. They can just start complaining. And it, it's, it's never a good thing when somebody's not playing. You don't want somebody on the team that's not going to play. My theory go with seven to eight players, rock out, and everybody's happy. Everybody can get playing time. So, like, with XLY, 73% of their portfolio is in 10 companies, but really, really, they only really have exposure, like major exposure in a few companies. I mean, Amazon's 23%, Tesla's 21%, Home Depot's seven, McDonald's is four, Nike is four, Lowe's is three, Starbucks is two, Target is two, Bookings is two, TJ Maxx, TJ, I think that's TJ Maxx, mm-hmm. TJ Maxx is, is one. So really, they have like seven companies yeah. It's going to rock out with, and the good thing is that they can make changes. So if one player isn't, you know, performing, you sub them out. So that's the difference. Once again, for anybody that's new, that's the difference between the ETFs and the index fund with an index fund, S and P 500, they have 500 companies. Yeah. So that's like a whole army, yeah. right? As opposed to the ETF. Yeah. yeah. It's like special ops. Yeah. That's like the infantry. Like that's where it's like black ops. Like they just got seven, trained you don't need a lot you don't need a lot, of yeah. you don't need a lot of marines yeah just a few the illest thing you said is that if you knew because if people when they start we started market mondays tesla wasn't even part of sli mm-hmm. Think about that. <laughs> like that literally wasn't even part of the etf and so now to even say that that is 20 percent of it that shows you the vast how vastly things can change yeah and, and the yeah. fact that it's a consumer discretionary uh etf and it has tesla in it um which hmm. is interesting yeah and I don't have, if I have extra money, I'll buy a Tesla. Every, everyone, <laughs> and Josh talked about it. It's like, hey, depending on what the classification ends up. Yeah, you know, something about, yeah. Walmart and Tesla go ahead and like Gary Payton playing four. <laughs> four. But hey, you got to get the gains. However, you can make it work. I was a quote uh, Bobby Knight had about Michael Jordan. If you need a center, who do you go? Like, draft Jordan, put him at the <laughs> to work out. Yeah, you gotta figure it out. That, that's a, yeah. You put the five best players in, just let it rock. Yeah. Starbucks and Tesla, they go hand in hand, right? Yeah, they're not on anybody's team. Uh, well, I don't know. Eighty thousand dollars or four dollars, same thing. Yeah, who knows? What's the difference? I mean, and even if you look, I want to give a shout out to uh, Romel Williams. Uh, he sent me this on Twitter. Um, the top five holding of holdings of BlackRock, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Tesla. Like, mm-hmm. if you guys literally just look at the biggest ETFs, biggest indexes, top five hedge funds, you're going to see the same overlap. Yeah. That's a valuable lesson. I just, somebody posted a clip and it was a Waka Flocker. And he said he became smart with his money when he realized how rich people spent their money. Shout out Waka. Right? So he, Good dude. This is, this is a, a prime Big example. Big crypto right? wallet if, too, boy. If, 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 yeah, oh yeah, that's a fact. If you just, like, like you take BlackRock or you take Berkshire and see where they're invested and you just said, all right, well, they're pretty wealthy. They're pretty successful. All right, let's just follow their investments. Chances are you're going to do pretty well. You're moving with the institutional money. And the more whales that have those positions, like even for Apple is a primary position for Bucket. And there's Coca-Cola. That has been replaced by Apple. A, it gives a certain level of safety because the drawdown is very little. But when you have BlackRock, Vanguard, all the major funds investing in these like five or seven companies, there's a reason why. They're telling you if all hell breaks loose, Neo can go to the ground, right? Certain companies can fall apart. These five are going to stay afloat because if all those institutional investors are there. They're going to keep them up and hold them afloat. They are telling you in the future which ones they think the most value. And so I'm not trying to have you guys recreate the wheel. Even if you don't think I'm the master investor, go go look at Robert, right? Go look at Vanguard. Go look at BlackRock. Go look at State Street. Like, go look and see what the big players are doing. And they'll tell you exactly uh, what you should be doing. And yes, even if you want growth, because if the market falls, 55%, those core five or seven won't draw down that much.